good to see everybody, uh, a majority of you again, and we got a few uh, new faces, um, so welcome if this is your first time. Uh, we'll, we'll start off uh, with the um, Pledge of Allegiance, so if you want to stand with me, uh, we'll join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, also I'd like to open up with a prayer. Is there any, uh, any uh, buddy with some uh, godly feelings today to, to open up with a prayer thing? All right, Lord, like protect this there. nation from charlatans and thieves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like we'll need some help then. So I'll <laughs> up in prayer. All right, um, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Lord, we pray for this uh, this election cycle coming up. Pray for uh, your wisdom and uh, pray for your protection and guidance that uh, we may do your will in this in this time. Lord, we just uh, come to you today with uh, thankfulness and and um, and praise and and forgiveness if needed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, can I add one thing to that? Okay, I'll say a little prayer then. Lord, just like to say thank you for all this for our uh, brothers and sisters here. Lord, I'd like to pray too that you hear our cries from down below. That our nation is healed, our land is healed, that we can reach out to our fellow citizens and enlighten them and bring our nation back to you again. So I'd just like to humbly ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we got double prayer. I like that. Nice. Double prayer. <laughs> <laughs> we barely get those, so that's good. All right, so uh, we, our first speaker, we got a. Um, uh, Karen Darnell, but she's currently not here. Not yet. Yeah, so we may uh, have her at the at the end or near the end of or whenever she gets here. So that uh, moves us up to um, to uh, Mr. Steve Stephen Bates, and uh, he's going to be currently running <clears throat> for the Clackamas County Chair uh, position. That's um, running against uh, Jim Bernard. Not chair. Chair. What? Huh? Not, not the, not the, not, okay, it's not the Clackamas County Chair, but it's the seat five. position. Five. Position five. number position five. five, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I was just reading the... <laughs> but you know what I mean, so, so, uh, can we move? But in that career of traveling, 
I was able to see different parts of the country. I got to deal with the federal government, I got to deal with county governments, I got to deal with local government. I got to see government at its best and I got to see government at its worst. Uh, that sort of gives you a little bit of background of where I think that I have what it takes to go to Oregon City and to actually represent you folks. Uh, after I retired, I actually had an, uh, an epiphany one night. I'd been in four different cities in three days. I woke up in a motel room one night and I was scared to death because I didn't know where I was. I'd been traveling so hard and so, so fast that uh, I just hadn't caught up with myself. And I said, hmm, maybe this is a sign of time of the times that I should slow down. So I slowly started withdrawing uh, some of my responsibilities. I actually gave away some of my responsibilities the following week. And I started slowing down. Uh, I started spending more time at home and I found out, you know, what home I sort of fun. Uh, because I started slowing down and spending more time at home, I started paying attention to what was going on around me. I didn't particularly care about some of the things that I was seeing. Of course, for 30 years, being a business owner in Boring, I had to pay this thing called the TriMet tax. And I knew that we had a bus come in the morning, and I knew we had a bus come at night, but we were paying $6 per thousand uh, of payroll per employee for basically a bus that could not bring my employees to our place of business, and my employees could not take the bus home. So I'm scratching my head and saying, well, why are we doing this? So one of my first projects after I started sticking around boring a little bit was to start investigating, find out if other people had the same question that I did. Come to find out, they, they did. So I started a process of doing the, the survey of the businesses. We found out that 94% of the businesses said we can't use TriMet. So we actually approached TriMet and said, well, will you improve our service? TriMet said, oh, well, what you got is pretty much what you're gonna get. And for 40 years, they've been doing it this, you know, a six o'clock morning bus and a six o'clock in the evening bus. So we pretty much said, okay, then we know other people, in fact, Mawala was one of them, we know other people had gotten out of TriMet, so we just looked into it. We actually had an uphill battle, but we were able to circulate a petition, we got a hearing, and we were able to successfully withdraw from TriMet, and that was three years ago. In that process, the people in Boring sort of said, well, if you're going to do that, maybe you should pay attention to a few other things. So they elected, <laughs> <laughs> they elected me to the chair of the Boring Community Planning Organization. And uh, it wasn't too long after we got out of TriMet that uh, I found out about this agreement that Clackamas County, Metro, and the city of Sandy had signed. It was actually an article in the newspaper. I looked at it and I said, this doesn't seem right. So I did some research. The research said basically what this agreement was going to do, it was going to take property away from property owners just because their property abutted the highway, Highway 26. This agreement was called the Greenway Corridor Agreement. And what it did was it took this property away from these people in the form of saying, what well, it's still your property, but you can only plant trees and the trees have to cover up what you're doing. And then we ask the question, well, who's gonna maintain this forest of trees? Oh, but that's the property owner's property, so they have to take care of the trees. And on top of that, they have to pay taxes on the property too. Now, if you know anything about property values, highway frontage property is valued higher. Well, the most valuable part of their property was being taken away from them. They said they could only plant trees, but they're paying the highest rate of property tax because it's highway frontage property. We, uh, we had a lot of discussions. We actually had the county commission come to Boring. Uh, and we actually approached them and says, why are you doing this, why are you doing this? And they said, well, it's, it's not really that bad of a deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
those two county commissioners are no longer there. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, John Ledlow and Tootie Smith won. And it was because of the relationship that the people of Boring had established with John Ludlow and Tootie Smith. John Ludlow and Tootie Smith stood up for Boring and they actually called for a hearing in Oregon City. On February 7th, 2013, Clackamas County voted to withdraw from that agreement. They did the right thing. Now that City of Sandy has appealed that to Luba, that's a different story. But if you look, uh, the City of Sandy uh, mayor who doesn't like us in Boring because we took away his green corridor. Uh, he's endorsed my competitor because he doesn't like me too much, but that's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> but that gives you an idea of what I've been involved in in Boring. Uh, we also had a confrontation with ODOT. We're the only community in the state, I am told, that actually ODOT backed away and says, okay, well, we'll go do something else. Uh, <coughs> Then people started saying, well, you know, if, if you've got the ability to do the research and the ability to want to get things done, maybe you should run for county commissioner. And then after I looked around, I said, you know what, maybe they're right. So that's why I'm running for county commissioner, is because we do need a conservative majority on our commission. The conservative majority must be able to take away the influences of the past by changing ordinances and also going to the state legislature. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of our job-related problems in Clackamas County is because of land use. If you're familiar with the land use laws, the land use laws are written in Salem. The counties only do what Salem tells them to do in relationship to land use. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what I intend to do as your county commissioner, I intend to go to the Association of Oregon Counties, and I intend to get my fellow commissioners together and say, we've got to go to Salem, we've got to change some of these laws. If anything, we need to change the laws to give the county more autonomy. And that's what I'm standing for, is autonomy for the counties. Not just Clackamas County, but all of the counties. We need to be able to do what we need to do in order to make sure we have jobs for our kids and our grandkids. This centralized planning in Salem, which is also administered through Metro. Now, I know you folks are outside of Metro down here, but believe it or not, Metro's influence is impacting what's happening here in Milwaukee because Metro can tell Clackamas County what to do. We need to break that string. We need to make it so that Clackamas County can do what Clackamas County needs to do. The other thing I intend to do as your commissioner, and in talking with Chair Ludlow, I found out that it's something that's not being done. We have a budget, $800 million. Now mind you, $700 million of it is federal money and state money that's passed through. The county has to do what the state tells them to do because that's the way it's set up. And a lot of it has to do with social programs and whatnot. We have no control over $700 million of our budget. We have $100 million of our budget. That is tax money. That's the property taxes that you and I pay. Nobody's going through that budget and looking at the programs in that budget and saying, is this program effective? Is this program actually getting results? Are we spending the money wisely? They're not doing that. We have programs that are 20 years old. We don't know that those programs are successful or not. Nobody has set any benchmarks for those programs. Well, that's one of the things I intend to do. I, I realize I can't do it in the first year, but I, I want to set up a, a system to where every three years, every program is reviewed for effectiveness and efficiencies. If a program doesn't meet the benchmarks established for it, that program should be withdrawn and that money should be taken and put somewhere else. Now some of you have heard about the county road funding problem. There's an education process going on about the county roads and I, mind you, I realize that we have a funding problem. We're $15 million short in maintaining the county roads. Where do, 
Where did that money go? Well, it used to be that the federal government used to give the county a lot of money, especially when we were cutting a lot of logs. I mean, when Malala had all the mills running here, when Boring had all the mills running up there, things were great in Clackamas County because for every log that was cut on federal land, the county got a piece of that log. And that money went to roads and it went to schools. Well, many of you know that we're not cutting the logs, so that money's pretty much dried up, and that's why we have a $15 million per year shortfall in road maintenance. One of the things a lot of people don't know is that there is a state law that says you can't spend um, property tax money collected by the county on county roads. Did you know that? No. It's a little ridiculous. The only money we can spend on county road maintenance is the gas tax money and money received from uh, the state for your uh, license plate tags. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things I want to do is I want to go to Salem and I want to get our legislators to change that law. There's no reason why we have to have a new tax just for road maintenance when in fact we have a hundred million dollars that we can move money around and we can spend money out of our regular budget to fix those roads. That is one of the things that I'm considering. Now, mind you, we might still have to have an additional tax depending on how the budget lays out, but we need to go to Salem and change that law so that we can spend tax, property tax revenue on road maintenance. That's one of the things that I'd like to accomplish. So it gives you a little bit of idea I want autonomy, and I want accountability, and I want a Clackamas County Commission that is going to be thinking about Clackamas County and not what the city of Portland wants. My opponent, uh, just to make things clear, my opponent is Jim Bernard. <laughs> Mr. Bernard uh, is Mr. Light Rail King. Mm -hmm. He basically, as mayor of Milwaukee, got the city of Milwaukee to commit to give TriMet $5 million for the Portland Milwaukee light rail. The people of Milwaukee on May the 20th are voting on a special tax to pay that $5 million bill. Now mind you, Mr. Bernard's been a county commissioner now for six years. During that six years, he actually worked a deal with his friends to take $20 million of our Packham's County money and give to TriMet. We're paying interest on that loan because we didn't have that money in the bank, just like Milwaukee didn't have the money in the bank. So $25 million has gotten Clackamas County what? Nothing. Mr. Bernard says that while there's $13 million worth of new infrastructure for the city of Milwaukee, well, $13 million from $25 million, that means that there's $12 million still missing. We still don't have a benefit there. And the people from all up, really can't use that light rail, can they? Nope. It did not benefit us at all. <clears throat> that is why I'm running, because Mr. Bernard and his friends have interest of kowtowing to the people of Portland and Metro. Like I said, you folks are being impacted by Metro decisions every day, even though you're outside of the boundaries. And I'll tell you a little story about boring, which is uh, I found out that half of Boring's in Metro and half of Boring is out. I happen to live on the part that's in, and that makes me mad because, you know, if you live in Metro, you actually pay extra taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually have a petition we're circulating in Boring now to get Boring completely out of Metro. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the things that we need to look at doing as a county is looking to see what we can do in order to reduce Metro's influence on the whole of Clackamas County. I don't know how we can do that, but as your commissioner, every time I have a chance to vote against a metro, uh, something that gives metro more control, I will definitely vote against it. We need to help our cities. I, I was actually here Thursday evening and I enjoyed the, uh, the Loyalty Day uh, rally at the fire station. And one of the things that uh, I hadn't really thought about was the fact that your economy here in Malala has been decimated in the last 20 years. Well, boring went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we have jobs for our kids and our grandkids. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to change the environment. Now, I'm a 
business owner, and I actually had two instances with Clackamas County with my business where they actually caused my business to stop growing on two different occasions. One was a land use issue, and the other one was a building permit issue. There was no give or take. It was, that's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. In other words, they could care less that I was going to employ 20 more people. They said, that's, that's gonna, the way it's going to go. Well, we need to change that attitude. Clark County, Washington has set an example for how a county should run a business-friendly environment. They reduced business regulations and they reduced business fees. Within six months of that change, they had increased the jobs, the jobs in the county had increased by 330, and they had actually had more than 80 different businesses start up or move in. Ladies and gentlemen, it's as simple as that. You reduce ordinances, you reduce restrictions on business, and all of a sudden, business will thrive. And that's one of the things that I want to do with your commission, is look at our ordinances, reduce the restrictions on businesses. Now, mind you, some of those ordinances have to do with saving the environment. Some of them are extreme. I say, well, then, if they're extreme, we need to take them back to the middle of the road. To give you an example, in Clackamas County, when it comes to surface water, in other words, rain runoff, we have the strictest requirements for buildings in Clackamas County in the metro area. We have this, they basically <coughs> adopted the same standard that the Seattle, uh, that the city of Seattle and King County adopted. They adopted this in 1995. It's the strictest, and in talking to the Home Builders Association of the Florida Metropolitan Area, they said Multnomah County and Washington County have more reasonable, uh, a more reasonable ordinance. And if that's the case, I say, well, we need to back that ordinance up to where we're equivalent to Multnomah County and Washington Counties so that we're not scaring businesses into the other counties. And conceivably, that's what we're doing because of our positioning and because of a strong environmental protection stance. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to hurt our environment by the same token. I do believe that uh, humans live here and humans also have to work here. And if humans can't work, then humans can't enjoy the environment. So it has to be a balance. And the balance has to be that we have to have more jobs. And with that, I will close with the remark saying I would hope that you vote for me. Uh, it's Steve Bates. You can go to our website, www.votestevebates.com. You can look at a little bit of what we've done in Boring. We also have uh, a writing there. We were endorsed by the Oregonian. Uh, I'm one of the few conservatives that's ever been endorsed by the Oregonian. They like my business-friendly approach. Uh, and I was also in, in, endorsed by the Gresham Outlook, the Sandy Post, and the Estacada News. Uh, but we, in this election cycle, are going to have a like turnout. Uh, the elections office is saying that they're looking at a 35% uh, turnout. 35% comes to about uh, 70,000 to 74,000 votes will be cast. I actually anticipate that it's going to be less than that. We're only going to have about a 30% turnout because there's not a whole lot of reason to put 50 cents on an envelope unless you're really excited about voting for me. <laughs> <laughs> but for the, for the majority of the people in Clackamas County, there is not a whole lot of things going on that they're really excited about voting. So we're looking to try to get the vote out. Uh, the conservative vote usually in an off cycle like this actually is the most, is the strongest vote because the liberal vote there, liberals are lazy if you really look at it. <laughs> the conservatives work hard, the liberals are lazy. I, I didn't make that up. I think Glenn Beck might have said it once. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, uh, I will close. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. 
you can vote for the status quo, and that would be my opponent, Mr. Bernard, or you can vote for progress, and that would be Steve Bates. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you next time. Does anybody got any questions? So we got a little bit of time for that. I got a quick one. Yes, Fred. Uh, if a company is paying X number of dollars in taxes, and you cut all of these regulations and all this other stuff, how much taxes will you will, will the company be paying the next year? But it uh, it depends so on. In other words, yeah. the question really is, if your company is allowed to grow and you're paying this much this year. How much will you pay the next year? Well, and that's really hard to say because the majority of, of the businesses, the, what they're paying the county is property taxes. Right. Uh, and property taxes automatically go up about 3% every year. Well, I guess the, well, I, I'm trying to make a statement, but it's not in touch with softball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if a business grows, if you cut taxes and a business grows, in the business, doesn't the business end up paying more taxes in a, in a not a percentage, but more taxes the next year? Well, that, and we also have more employees that are paying taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that's and that's what makes a strong government is a growing economy makes a strong government provided you have people watching what they're spending the money on. If you look at what happened in the city of Portland, mm -hmm. they had a very strong economy and things were going great. But then they started spending money, you know, $13 million for an office building that only houses 22 people. Uh, I mean, it's things like that. You've got, business, uh, you've got government going awry, and, and we, we, have to, we have to avoid that. Yes? Uh, maybe it's a sort of a two-part question or comment, but uh, all too often we go after someone to vote for them. And, um, and I'll use Tootie Smith as an example. She gets elected. And then uh, we're not really getting any bang for our buck. You know, no real red meat being tossed out, anything being accomplished that is meaningful in some ways. And now she wants to go on the next thing. You know, so it seems to me that we got too many people that it's all about them. And I don't want a career politician. I want someone who's going to get in there, do a good job, and then go on with his life. And then the second part is I'm looking for someone who is willing to think outside the box. And I have talked to some of the commissioners. Why don't they privatize some of the county government? You know, road department, some of the parks. You know, they'd be in better hands than private enterprise, and they could make money. And it would get these county workers into the private sector where they stop voting their pocketbook and voting for politicians just to keep the status quo. Yeah. So we can reduce the size of the county government and ensure that the taxpayers, you know, are uh, protected. You know, that they actually have a vote in things. So those are my two things. Well... To answer your first question, okay. in fact, it's one of the first things that Fred asked yeah. me when I met him. He says, what are you going to do two years from now if you're elected? <coughs> yeah. Well, I really didn't know where he was going, but uh, after we visit a little bit, I guaranteed him that I intend to die in Boring, where I live. In other words, I am a career Clackamas County resident. I'm not a career politician. If I do well, Four years from now, as your commissioner, if you folks feel I should run another four, run for another four-year term, that would be your decision. But at this point in time, I'm only looking for a four-year commitment. We'll see how things look four years from now, because at that time, I'll be of the age to where uh, I should retire. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, like I say, depending on how things are, and then. To, to respond to privatization <coughs> of certain government, uh, I, I'm open to that. Uh, uh, there is, actually, we probably need to privatize the permit lobby. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you folks are, are union members, and I'm not here to upset any union people, but the problem that we have in our permit lobby is a union-related problem. The customers 
have grievances and there's no way for the customer to get his grievance heard because the union then grieves management because they're being too hard on the employees. Right. And that to me, I mean, it should all be about customer service. I mean, you, you work, if you um, are employed by the government, you work for the people. Uh, but they don't have that attitude. Yeah. And, 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 and I agree with you, we need to look at privatizing where they can. Now, in, uh, in looking at what the commission, you know, uh, the two, first two years of uh, Tootie and, and John Lovell being there, unfortunately, the conservative majority that we were supposed to have really wasn't there. It didn't materialize. And as a result, some of the, some of the things that we were looking for, myself included, didn't happen uh, because of politics. Hopefully we'll be able to get rid of the politics as usual and like you say, think outside the box and get some things going. And with my voice on that commission, there will be a consistent ma majority. I'm not gonna say that I agree with John and Tootie on everything okay. because I, I'm not, I'm not gonna walk lockstep with anybody. Right. But if it's a conservative value, you better believe that uh, I'm gonna be right there with it. Yeah, I don't even expect you and I to agree on anything. No. It's just a matter that, uh, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people are just tired of <coughs> people going to office and then they seem to forget who their base was. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I was, of course, uh, this thought process, I'm thinking, okay, now, come May the 21st, one of two things is going to be, either I'm going to be commissioner-elect or I'm going to go on with my life. If I'm commissioner-elect, I'm also trying to lay out a plan, you know, as your commissioner, I was thinking driving down here today, you know what? I should probably set up some sort of an arrangement where at least once a year as your commissioner, I come and speak to you, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's a commitment that I would like to make, but I, you know, there's a lot of groups like this, so I'm not sure how it will work out, but that's one of the goals. I wanna be able to come back and report to you and say, you know what, we have this problem, mm -hmm. and I need your help. You know, you might need to write a letter or two, and, and that's sort of the way I, I want to be the people's commissioner. Uh, I stand for voting. My, my opponent doesn't. If you recall, he, he and his friends actually created an ordinance that was going to take money from all of us and send it to Portland and uh, Multnomah County for a thing called the Selwood Bridge oh, without yeah. a vote of the people. <laughs> yeah. Now, mind you, if, if we need to do something like that, I say, well, the people have to say it. Uh, you know, we're going to put it to the people. I'm not. Gonna, <coughs> I'm not going to be imperious enough to think that I know better than you. I want you folks to tell me when it comes to if there's going to be a new tax or spending money, especially if the money's going outside of the county, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. If I can say one more thing, the big thing I would be looking for as much local control as possible mm -hmm. to get back to that. And that means taking stands, I think at times, of getting out of Salem and the feds as much as possible. Because you know, when it comes to schools and just about anything, <coughs> people at that level are gonna do <coughs> more what they need than anybody else. Yeah, centralized government, of course, that's what Governor Fitzhauer is all about. Centralized government. His yeah. predecessor, Mr. Kulandowski, also yeah. was believed heavily in the centralized government. I, I do not. Uh, yeah. Every community is different, uh, and because every community is different, we cannot have the attitude that one size fits all, because yeah. one size does not fit all. I appreciate it. You got my vote. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. I have no question, but I do have a comment that something that I feel that a lot of the politicians, they think that they know what is best for us before coming to us and asking us what is best for you. They seem to think that they are above everybody else and that they know what is best for the people out there, and it's, it makes me sick. Uh, and I agree with you. My approach to the job of commissioner is this. If you elect me, my responsibility is to look at the budget, just as I told you, and I intend to look at it and set up a system to where we're reviewing it. In other words, I have to watch the purse strings for you. I can't call for a vote on every little issue. I have to make some decisions for you. Uh, and that's, that's where your trust
trust is you're trusting me to make those small decisions. But when it comes to big decisions, I say we put it up to a vote. Mm -hmm. I need I need for the people of Clackamas County to tell me which direction to take when it comes to something such as new taxes mm -hmm. or spending. Well, give me an example. There is this urban renewal district outside of Clackamas Town Center <coughs> that was shut down. <coughs> There was $48 million sitting in the bank that they had collected. And by law, that $48 million conceivably should have gone back to the districts that it belonged to. One of the districts that it belonged to was the county sheriff's office. Clackamas County Fire District number one also had about an $8 million interest in that $48 million. $20 million of it belonged to the school district. Well now, mind you, the $20 million that had been paid in to that fund uh, that was taken away from the schools was actually backfilled by the state. In other words, the state sets the funding for each school district. So the state backfilled that $20 million. So that $20 million of the $48 million, if we gave it to the school district, conceivably the school district would have to write a check to the state because they're reimbursing the state for what the state paid. Mm -hmm. That made all kinds of sense to me, but there were certain people on the commission said, no, we can't let that $48 million go back to where it belongs because then the state will get $20 million. If we save it, if we don't do it, then we can spend that $20 million here. Well, it ended up where I actually testified in front of the commission, and this was earlier this year, and I said, put it to a vote to the people. Let the people decide if the sheriff's office should get the $8 million or the fire district should get the $8 million. Yeah. You guys are making this decision based upon what you think is right, and I don't think you're right. <coughs> put it to the people. Well, it was a three to two vote, not to put it to a vote. They're spending all that money in Clackamas County on make work projects. So that gives you an idea of, of, the, uh, of the problems that we have in Clackamas County with, with the current makeup of the commission. Did uh, Savas vote to keep that money in the account to spend the money? Yes. yes, Paul Savas was the swing vote. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, one more. One thing that's kind of, kind of across my mind over this time of of, of trying to get to know you, and I, I, I like what you're saying, and, and you know, with this ordinance deal, and that's kind of one of the things that I've looked at on the, on the, on the city level, of the ordinance and bringing bringing the liberty and the, the freedom back to the people, as you know, what it sounds like you're talking about. <coughs> and you, you mentioned that um, you know this this coming of retiring and, and you know being at home and, and kind of you know realizing what's going on and you know with the government and different things like that and, and having more interest in that. And with a lot of us here in Malala, you know, we're having this 912 group meeting here, we, we, we've been meeting for years and we all pretty much know each other, you know, as friends and, you know, from my perspective, we don't really know you that much. We're just kind of wondering, you know, you mentioned that you were dealing a lot with this, um, you know, transportation metro thing and, and just, you know, kind of wanting to know you more of, you know, I, I like hearing that you know Glenn Beck because you know that that's kind of something that we're all familiar with and, and you know rather hear a lot of <laughs> and like. So you know that's that's good to hear. So just being able to have you here and and and, and learn more about you and what you're about and um, and that you're wanting to come back more is, is good to hear as well too. Well, so and, we really and like I say, that. you know, if, if elected, that is one of the things I want to do. But by the same token. Uh, I want to spend some time at home too because <laughs> the wife says, well, you can't go every night. <laughs> you can't go every Saturday. You know? So, uh, like I say, there has to be balance and everything, but that's one of the things I'm thinking about. How can I make that work? Because if I'm going to be uh, a good commissioner, I have to be able to have the environment to work. I know you guys can't come to the commission meetings because you, mm -hmm. some of you can, but some of you can't because you have a job to go to. Uh, and even when they have the six o'clock uh, evening session at six o'clock 
on a Thursday night isn't convenient for a lot of people because that's the same time as a little league game or something such as that. So it's hard for people to be involved in the county government. Of course, you have your city government here too that you have to pay attention to. So understanding that, the commissioners need to be out and about more than they are. Uh, I, I firmly believe that. I don't know how I can successfully do that, but that's one of the things that I, I want to look at and find out. Because I'm finding out how big a county this is. It's pretty big. There's <laughs> 220,000 uh, registered voters. Now, mind you, the, this county, I believe there's two eastern states that can fit within the boundaries of this county. I mean, it's big. Uh, but finding a way of at least keeping in touch with the people, that's one of the things I want to do. Well, a couple of years ago, the county commissioners went around to the different towns, I don't know, it's like one every month or every other month or something, and they had a meeting with all the local people. And, and, and they're, they're doing that. Uh, they, they call that the town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and they do it, uh, it. It's working out about every one, one every quarter. Oh, okay. uh, and, and it's an evening meeting, uh, mm -hmm. which, which makes it convenient. In fact, it was last month they were in Sandy. Uh, they'll be in Estacada, I believe, in September. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, actually, it was Chair Ludlow that actually started that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. It's a way of reaching out. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking about a uh, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a formal, uh, that's a formal involvement. I, I would prefer, an, informal involvement that way you guys can really you know grab me aside and say get yourself a cup of coffee I want to talk your ear off <laughs> type of thing. Uh, that, that, that's that I think that's one of the things that that we're missing as a county is uh, the ability for you folks to really communicate with with your elected officials everything's too formal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. there's no other question thank you Mr. Thank Bates you. appreciate it thank you